I'm getting the produce ready to be picked up for the organic locally grown store here. They purchase anything that we can grow. They absolutely love what we're growing here. So here we have some red potatoes we harvested. Watch my red potato video on that. We harvested 80 pounds of red potatoes, Yukon Gold, from a 4 foot by 15 foot long box. Here we have our onions, beautiful onions this year. Harvested the, this yesterday. This is 300 most amazing tasting plums you'll ever have. So while I was getting ready for the market, I thought I'd get you updated on the garden. Here's our plum tree that has just produced more plums than I can actually honestly count. And so I've given up trying to estimate how many plums we have here, but it's uh, well over a thousand, very conservatively speaking. Watch my video on how to get a huge harvest from your fruit trees also. Here's a cherry tree I planted this year. It's doing amazingly well. I recommend you take a look at the link below to watch my video on how to plant fruit trees or trees of any kind for optimal health and growth. This cherry tree is three years old and is a beautiful tree. It's well balanced. We have a great shape to the tree and a nice sturdy trunk. Again, this is all from the pruning and planting properly of the tree. I encourage you to click the link below to the video on how to prune fruit trees. Walking into our backyard, you'll see that we've got strawberries planted here and blackberries. We currently have a bird netting over it. I really love this bird netting. It is very durable and it does not snag like the thin plastic bird netting typically does. And it saved our berries from the birds. They absolutely love our berries. Had a great harvest from our strawberries, beautiful strawberries, and from our blackberries this year. I'm amazed because it's in Ju because it's June, and our berries are, are putting on, as you can see over here, blossoms again. And I'm guessing for another harvest. Here we have a lemon tree. I think it's a Meyer lemon, or this is the Meyer lemon. I'm not sure. Over on this side, we've got the Swiss chard. We've got two different kinds of kale here. I think it's called crinkly leaf, and we call this dinosaur kale. We've got another uh, kale growing here. The Swiss chard is just huge and beautiful. Here we have bush beans. They grow so tall that we actually have a vertical twine attached to them to, to give them some kind of support. Then we're coming over to the cantaloupe. You can see we've got cantaloupe growing all over. Whenever we have a fruit growing on a vine, I cut the vine so it can, stops growing and all the energy goes into the fruit. We've got lots of cantaloupe growing here. And then we've got some cucumbers growing. These are kind of a long, skinny cucumber. It's called a soyo long cucumber. It's the first time we've planted these, but they are growing well. I've uh, gone through and had to top all these plants now because they're all uh, as tall or taller than the seven foot high nine gauge wire that we have at the top. So I've cut the tops off of them to stop them from growing. Here we have some pickling cucumbers. They're growing great. Just really healthy looking plants and blossoms all the way up and down the plants. We've got our corn growing here. Excited for the corn. I think we're going to have a problem once it gets up, you know, full height because it's going to be taller than the in the garden greenhouse canopy. We've got bell peppers here. We've got some great looking bell peppers growing in here. Here we have the tomatoes growing. These are big beef. We really like the quality of the big beef. Uh, it grows cleanly. It doesn't want to split off. Leaves don't curl like the other uh, varieties do. This is box number five. It's an 18 inch wide by 12 foot box. And we have 24 watermelon growing in here. As you can see where the watermelon has grown, I've cut the end of that vine to put all the energy into that watermelon. So I encourage you to watch my how to prune watermelon video but uh, these have been going great as you can see we've got the A-frames on here and the 20% shade cloth so on hot days we can protect it from the extra heat that may be coming off the wall of the house.
and these do get full sun so the extra shade cloth is helpful although once the plants became more mature and we made sure that we were watering every morning before it got hot like around seven or eight o'clock we haven't had any issues this is box number eight here we have the blue lake pole beans they're an heirloom they're doing really well as you can see they've grown all the way up to the tops of the seven foot vines already we're anticipating blossoms to start coming on very quickly you can see all the tomatoes in the back on the other side of the box occasionally with this will happen I don't know why but a plant will just die and so when that happens I just take it out of the garden and move on we've got 120 of these in here so I'm sure we'll be fine over here I've got the Kentucky Wonder pole beans really like those great flavor great production so those should be coming on here quickly also I can see the blossom pods already getting set there over here in box six we've got herbs we actually have two herb boxes we've got chives there and I don't really know what everything we're growing here looks like some basil maybe some cilantro and then over here in box seven we've got mint and this will be just mint because it grows so much we want to have it have its own box just to make things look nice my wife has her nicely decorated workbench out here in the garden the production of the big beef tomato in conjunction with the mint lighted gardening method has just been amazing it's literally jaw-dropping people will come by and see the health of the plants the deep green there aren't bugs attacking it and this uh, huge clusters of tomatoes growing all the way up and down the vines it's just beautiful I love gardening now because it's so productive we also feed the nutrients to our pear trees and they're just in great health we had some early blight that I needed to get taken care of but other than that they are just growing fantastically well you can see from the deep beautiful colors of the leaves and the health of the tree our pomegranate tree is doing exceptionally well too I keep it trimmed at the bottom so that it doesn't turn into a bush but it already has several pomegranates set and maturing the honeybees absolutely love the flowers from the pomegranate tree we've got eight blueberry bushes I've already started picking berries off of them although we're not quite to the full harvest yet and looking forward to the harvesting from the blueberries the fig tree and we're trying to grow it as a tree is just full of figs and is extremely healthy love the color the richness the fullness of the leaves just a very healthy plant again I have to attribute that to properly feeding it getting all the nutrients that it needs to the mint light a weekly feed this is box 11 and this is our watermelon and zucchini box these watermelon will be very very large watermelon so I'm going to be growing them on the ground I do like growing the icebox watermelon vertically because I can get more in a smaller space here's some zucchini looking great you notice here this is another zucchini plant and I heavily prune my zucchini plants to keep them heavy, uh, healthy uh, keeps the powdery mildew problem off doesn't give places for bugs to hide I have had zero problems with the vine borer this year but I am attentive to it I also start spraying thuricide uh, about a month after these get planted to make sure that if the vine borer moth is laying eggs when those larvae hatch and they start eating that they are taken care of quickly we've been harvesting zucchini here all the time and we get some more zucchini coming on there's three four I can see right now the nectarine tree is loaded with nectarines everywhere I'm gonna have to thin this out but this is one year old now and it's just full beautiful healthy color again I feed the all of our trees the midlight a weekly feed I give them the weekly feed monthly when they're in fruit production but that is one healthy looking tree as I mentioned I'm out here getting ready for the market and I'm going to be harvesting all these cabbages here been very very happy with the cabbage just exceptionally health big beautiful heads on them we've given several away already that we're just producing too much to try to give it all away and we decided just to sell it to the market here we have a bell pepper plant that's doing very well just transplanted that last Friday and here are our spaghetti squash we've been fighting powdery mildew 
but that's always a big battle. Once it gets started and established, it, you really can't get rid of it. All you can do is try to maintain it from spreading. But here are our biggest spaghetti squash. I've never grown spaghetti squash before, so I thought I'd give it a try. I've actually given it some extra support. I've got an extra line coming down here, which goes up and supports this vine here because this weighs so much. I actually wanted to see how much these two squashes weigh. I brought out my fishing scale and I'm just going to hook this right into here and see what kind of weight we get. I'm guessing it's going to be at least five pounds. Oh, there's seven, there's nine. So it looks like we're at nine pounds, 12 ounces. And that would be too much for one vine to hold by itself. So having this extra twine go all the way up this one vine and go to the top to hold it up to take the stress off of this because you can see it actually came over the top and grew back down uh, really helps the plants other than that they can hold their own weight up to about six pounds uh, here's some peppers these are um, sweet peppers I've never planted them before but they just really look healthy I'm very happy with them and also the size I've been giving these away too here's a nice size peppers in there these will probably go to market today too oh look back here I don't know if you can see them in the camera but we get a worm right here in the sand and sawdust this is where he makes home lots of worms to, uh, all the way through the sand and sawdust bed here they absolutely love the soil that we make out of the sand and sawdust here's the, some peppers here we're just waiting for these to turn red and then we'll pick them they just look delicious the avocado tree is just doing really well. I pruned it earlier this year, really opened it up, and it really added a bunch of new growth to it. Here's a new branch from this year. You can see it's green. Nice, thick, healthy branch. We're already getting fruit set on here. So looking forward to harvesting from our avocado tree. The satsuma is looking great too. Don't really do a lot with citrus as far as maintaining it because it just kind of grows as it w wants to but we've got fruit set here and these will probably ripen up around October or so this is what I call my super hive she this queen is amazing I got three deeps on there it's, I'm ready to split this hive I took off about 30 pounds of honey yesterday and I'll be harvesting that tomorrow and I added another super on there and I'm gonna be um, letting the bees make comb honey in the little dishes this year too. That'll be fun. Three and one apples doing great too. You saw the onions that I harvested from bed 11 so that's an empty box right now so nothing's going on in there. We are exclusively drinking rainwater now at our house and here's our rain capture system and you can see the hose coming to the back door. We fill up these three jugs with three gallons of water and we put it through our Berkey water filter and probably the most healthy water that you can have. It's absolutely amazing tasting. If you haven't seen my Berkey water filter video, highly recommend you take a look at that. And please make sure that you have the ability to have clean, potable water for your family. Here's another citrus tree. I don't remember what it is. I think it's a, you know, I don't even remember. But we have little something's growing on it. My wife's added little garden decorations in here. We've certainly found that the plants that are in pots do not do as well as the ones that are in the grow boxes. Here's a sage plant that just won't stop growing. I don't know how many years old it is. It got uh, damaged during a rainstorm or a hurricane or something, but it keeps on going. Here's another little pretty spot that my wife has set up for some uh, ornamental plants, some flowers. Back here you can see our eggplants. They're doing really well. I have a video on how to prune eggplants to get your greatest productivity out of them. Over here you can see we've got cantaloupe and there's a cantaloupe right there. You can see I cut off the vine there. Then next to that we've got cucumbers. Looking forward to those coming on and then some more cucumbers over here. So I hope you've enjoyed this garden update. It's been quite a while since I've done a garden update. I've been really busy in other people's gardens. Uh, I started doing this method 18 months ago. This is I think my fifth season because we grow several seasons during the year and I have to say every season is better. This is LDS Prepper reminding you if you are prepared you shall not fear and I encourage you to grow your own food 
and enjoy gardening.